Dear brothers and sisters, we're going to meditate on the second Sunday of Lent. The passage is the one of the transfiguration, taken from Mark chapter 9. What happened? Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white. Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. And then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Why this passage? Why in the second Sunday of Lent? Because it prepares us to be launched into the Easter season, into the trauma of Good Friday, into this mystery of suffering. The same did Jesus with them. He wanted to strengthen them for the trauma of the cross. He wanted to, to put in before them the glory, the sight of the glory that lies beyond the cross. Give a purpose, give a motivation, a spiritual motivation. We need it. Six days before, Jesus did the first prediction of his passion. So the apostles were shocked, frightened, confused. So now he takes initiative. Jesus takes initiative and tells Peter, John, and James, Come with me. I want to celebrate with you the Feast of the Tabernacles. Come, come with me. That was the context in the Jewish life, in the Jewish calendar in that moment, the Feast of the Tabernacles or of the Tents. So he said, Come with me. Imagine in that moment you are being called by Jesus, only three, to go up a high mountain, the Mount Tabor, called by name, invited to go up with him, means to leave something else, all else behind, all worldly anxieties, concerns, legitimate, like genuine or illegitimate concerns, everything, any kind of anxiety, leave it behind. Come with me to the top. We have to remember that when Jesus went to the mountaintop, it was always to be in intimacy with his Father, to rest in his Father's arms. Go to the standpoint of God where we can have a broader perspective of everything and you can see all things in connection with God. You can see everything in God and through God. That's the idea of going to the mountaintop. And then Jesus immersed himself in prayer with his Father and suddenly all of him was transfigured. In the Greek means metamorphosis, like his figure was changed, transcended. Like God is trying to tell them and to tell us, I want to show you what lies beyond the figure of the ordinary life. I want, to, I want you to know the spiritual reality that is far more greater and more beautiful than the ordinary. And that it is like saying to us, like heaven and the glory lies tied, intertwined with ordinary life. But what happened with them is like they gave him, he gave them the vision of, The mystical touch, like the mystical experience of what lies beyond. And they had no language to describe it, to describe this, to the point that they were saying, yeah, his clothes were dazzling white, like no fuller on earth could bleach them. There's no language to describe what they saw, the spiritual, the divine. We can imagine that situation. And why so much light? Because light... It's a brightness that provides ground for the true vision to see clearly and distinctly the face of God, clear, bright, the clothes, everything bright and luminous. Why? And it's beautiful. Because God was revealing to them the face of God. And they were in awe and fascinated. The same face that Adam and Eve were hiding from. Because Sin distorted the image of God to the point that the heart of men didn't want to be close to God and they they hid themselves from God. The serpent produced the distortion and therefore the, the desire to hide from the vision of God. And now the opposite is happening. Jesus is revealing the truth. And it's not the serpent, but it's now the Lamb of God who is revealing the beauty of the face of God. And the reaction of Peter is, It is so good to be here. And the word good in the Greek is kalos, which means also beautiful. That it is beautiful to be here. Let us make some three tents, three booths. I want to focus on you. 
I want to stay contemplating in worship and in praise because my heart is longing for you. My deepest, the deepest longing of my heart is to rejoice in the beauty of the goodness of God. And that is beautiful because joy is the serious business in heaven. The delight, that is the essence of Christianity. Suddenly, that moment, a cloud overshadowed them. So, from the moment of vision, where they're contemplating the beauty of God, suddenly a cloud overshadowed them. Like they lost connection. Like they lost the control. And then what happened? They heard a voice. From the organ of vision, they passed through to the organ of hearing. Why? Because the vision is something external. The hearing is a word, a thought that comes into your heart and it and it becomes your logic becomes intertwined with your inner logic that's so interesting also because the voice expresses that god is personal it's not a force it's not a cosmic energy it's a person and the voice says this is my beloved son so this beauty speaks about love my beloved son so you're listening to something that is love you are in touch with the beloved with belovedness and the voice is saying, listen, which is ob audire, which is obey. Obey, and Peter is understanding, obey the joy of love. Obey the joy of love. He's revealing that the center and the core of Christianity is not a duty, a love, a philosophical principle, or a theory, but joy. Joy is the center and the core of Christianity. It is beautiful. It is good to be here. Beautiful to be loved, to be desired, to be chosen by God. What happened after this when they were coming down the mountain? Everything changed for them. Their vision of life changed. They can see all things in the light of His light, of the light of Jesus. If they obey, they can see a hidden light, a hidden glory underlying everything, every person. They can see the light of love and the light of beauty beneath or underlying persons, trees, animals, mountains. The key is to listen, to obey. So let us ask Jesus, the heart of a listener, the heart of a disciple, so we can see his glory always and especially when we have to suffer crosses in life. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.